finger of God. That's the first thing they said. Then the second thing, what happened? And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them. So the magician said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. But Pharaoh, they did something in his heart. Instead, what did Pharaoh do? Pharaoh had in his heart, as the Lord has said. Can we try? You think we can try? <laughs> Should we give it a shot? Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, oh, then the magician said unto Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. And Pharaoh, his heart was hardened, and as the Lord has said, what do you understand by that? Wait, man, was that? The magician saw something that was different from the African magic. And they recognized that individual, they, they have been magician in the house of Pharaoh. Yeah. The, all the magical power they had is for seeing all the other people. When they saw this one, I believe it was different from them. So yeah. they, they were trying to say that we have done so many things, but the one we see is quite different from us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. This one we are seeing is quite different. This is the finger of God. Let's look at the Bible passage, Exodus chapter 8 and verse 16 to 19. Exodus chapter 8 and verse 16 to 19. It's on the It's printed. And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out your. Have we seen it? Yeah. yeah. And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out your rod and smite the dust of the land that it may become light throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in man and in beast, and in the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantment to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there were lice upon man and upon beast. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord has said. The topic for today's lesson is the finger of God. One of the things that this lesson tried to teach us is that most of the things we do as people has consequences. Praise the name of the Lord. Some of them have positive consequences, some of them have negative consequences. Then, there are certain things, there's someone that said, there's this parable they used to say in Nigeria, they say the cow will not get tail, that God, the dragon fly. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So there are certain things when people do, God himself can intervene. That when the magician, you know, they were, the, the Israelites, they were slaves in Egypt, and God, those people that were slaves were God's own people. And God wanted to set them free. But when they would, when God sent Moses, because God told Moses, I've seen the crowd, my people have come down. I want to solve this problem. Then God sent Moses to Pharaoh. But Pharaoh would not agree. Pharaoh was stubborn. Then God started. But God did certain things that were direct punishment as a result of what the Egyptians were doing to the Israelites, praise God. Amen. He said, and you will notice that in that lesson, God was trying, it's like God was telling us, if you suppress other people, I will suppress you too. Praise God. Amen. So, everything that we do has a consequence. There's a result for everything we do. Let's look at our lesson introduction. We say, that is the introduction I started us. There, there are two ways they can use the Bible, use the finger of God, the word the finger of God. They, are, they use it two ways. Sometimes they use it figuratively, that is, they use it to, they don't say it directly that God uses a finger, but they will tell you God intervened. Then there are certain times God finger himself. God uses a finger to show that this is like this. Praise God. 
And for those times that God used his finger to show that it was because God needed to cause a desperate change. Praise God. There's somewhere in Daniel. If we read further down, the Bible says in Daniel, there was this man. Let's, let's look at it together. Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. Daniel is after Ezekiel. Daniel is after Ezekiel. You want to read Daniel chapter Daniel chapter 5 from 1 to 5. Daniel chapter 5 from 1 to 5. Amen. Amen. The sheets of the king made a great feast to the thousand of his word. That they say amen. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, have yeah, right. mm-hmm. Is it right on the sheet? Yeah. I think no, that was not the that particular one is on the sheet. Daniel chapter 5. Amen. Amen. Daniel chapter 5. Daniel, Daniel five. is after Ezekiel. Ezekiel is in the Old Testament. 5 verse 1. Daniel 5. Then she said, Then she said, The king made a great feast to the thousand of his laws and drank wine before the thousand. Then she said, Why, why he was tasting, why he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessel which his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his prophet and his princes. His wife and his husband might drink therein. Verse 3. Then they brought the golden vessel that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king brought and his and the king and the and, the, and his princess and the, the king and his prince, his wife and his husband drank in them. Verse 5. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold. And of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. Five, in the same hour came forth the God of a man hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plasters of the walls of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thought troubled him, so that the joints of his loin were loose. And his knees smoked one against another. Let's stop it there. No, let's stop it there. What happened? Do you know that there was this king? Because he got it so powerful, they went to Israel, they fought war, they collected the God. There are sometimes when God made when God God has a special people called the Israelites. When those people make God and they want God will do, God will allow other people to come and yeah, defeat them, yeah. capture them. So when God is punishing his people, God used them to punish his people. When God used them to punish his people, this man that they went, they took all the things from the temple. But he did not see anything to drink wine in. He and his girlfriends, he and his people. But the cup that he took from the temple of God, the Bible says, at that instant, God in heaven, here writing, wrote on the wall. God, your time is finished. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. What, what we are saying, do you know even the today, there are times there are things that pertains to God that we can take for granted. Praise God. There are things God is saying now, everything we do have consequences. It can be either for the good or for the bad, but everything we do have consequences. Look at something, Acts. Acts chapter, Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 12 and verse 22. In Acts chapter 12 and verse 22, we see again, not very long from now, we have a projector, so we'll just, the, We'll use a projector so we can just get this thing and we can just look at it together and we can all be faster instead of stressing ourselves to be flipping from one to each other. Acts 12 and verse 22. 
You there? Yeah. In that verse 22, he said, look at what he said. On the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robe, sat on his throne and delivered public address to the people. They shouted, this is the voice of a God, not a man. Look at what happened. Verse 23, immediately, because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down and he was eaten by worms and died. What happened? Who wants to tell me what happened then? Yeah, we noticed that one thing I do not know that power of God. But he did not acknowledge God that God, the one that put me in a particular position. So sometimes we should be careful. Sometimes we go out there to preach to somebody or minister to somebody or we perform miracle in the church. Do not let to take the glory. Let God take the glory. He, will, he will allow the people to for pride to overtake him. He will repeat. Instead of him putting God first, he will put himself first. And he wanted to take us. So we still make us understand that nobody can share if you don't have God. Amen. Amen. Anybody want to say anything about that? They may want. You want he said that if you didn't give him a powerful speech, then the world will say no, that that, 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 that you must be God. You can't be ordinary, man, you must be God. But the time you won't finish saying it. By the time the people got through saying it, the angels struck him. He got rotten straight. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was. <laughs> Praise What can we learn from there? What advice would you tell him I should give myself from there? I think, um, from my personal standing, whatsoever you do, let God take the praise. Whatsoever you do, let God take the praise. In the future, they have one. They, there's a team called Barcelona, a lot of people here, they don't watch football. Uh -huh. they, so they were playing the Champions League. They are a much better team. And they were playing one small team. They had the first leg, they supposed to play two legs. They had the first leg. The first leg they beat Tottenham, I think, four zero. After the game, everybody was saying, Messi is a football player. They won't be done. Everybody knows Messi is a soccer boy. The next game, you know how many they gave them? Five zero. Yeah, because some people will compare themselves to God. You can't joke in the even play, you can't compare yourself to God. Say Exodus chapter 20. Let's look at Exodus chapter 20. He said, God is Genesis, Exodus. Exodus is the second book of the Bible. It's just at the beginning. Genesis, Exodus. Exodus chapter 20. Verse 3. He said, You shall not make for yourself idol. You shall not make for yourself idol. Anything in the heavens or anything on the earth beneath, you shall not bow yourself to them or worship them. Say, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Exodus 20, verse 4. For I, the Lord your God. Exodus chapter 20. If you see that, verse 4. He said, you must not make yourself any idol in the form of anything in heaven or on the earth beneath or in the water below. You shall not bow yourself to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, is a, 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 a jealous God. He didn't end there. He said, punish your children for the sins of their fathers to the third and fifth generation of them that hate him. The question I'll ask myself now, you know we say, this Sunday school, I say, everything we do has consequences. Then I'm saying now, am I the way God wants me to be 
respect him in my life? Am I respecting him, respecting him like that? Praise the name of the Lord. The place, the way God wants to be honored in my life, am I giving him the honor like that? Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Then the why is it that the the Herod? Herod did well that he done very well. We read that Herod, he was a king, he made a powerful speech. For him to make that powerful speech, it means he prepared for it. For him to become king, it means he fought his way to the top. But you and myself, and the achievement, am I celebrating myself or am I celebrating God for it? Praise God. Amen. Like Herod, God now is saying, if I'm giving the glory to myself, there can be consequences. And there can be negative consequences. The Bible says God, in Hebrews, the Bible says God is a consuming fire. God is a loving God, yes, but as much as you love your kids when they do things that are wrong, you can correct them. In Africa, you can correct them good. <laughs> in America, you can correct them the way you want to correct them, but in Africa, you can correct them good. So God now is saying, as much as it's a loving God, he can stay correct. And sometimes now, like in the gathering, the reason, the essence of the church, the real essence of the church, we that say we want to go to heaven, this is an opportunity for us to encourage ourselves. Don't get weak. Don't slap it. You understand me? After some time, everything looks normal. Everything looks as if it doesn't matter. But when you come to church and the church reminds you, ah, don't get weak. One day, anything will do without you. And without you, know, we need to go to heaven. So, X, Y, Z. God don't want to praise the name of the Lord. God will help us in Jesus' name. Yeah. In Genesis chapter 19 and verse 24 and 25, Genesis, the first book of the Bible, God is slow to anger, but he's abundant in mercy. God is slow to anger. God does not get vexed. Not everything we do now will obey God then. Bible says God is slow to anger, but he's abundant in mercy. But you and myself, if I keep hurting your feeling, hurting your feeling every day, he will say you get tired of the relationship. Yeah? So God too, you know God made us in who image? We are being in who image? So it means the same way we can, when you push somebody, push somebody too much, the person can draw back. God said, draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. If you push me away too much, what I will do? I will. Praise the name of the Lord. Genesis chapter 19 and verse 24 and 25. Genesis 19, 24 and 25. In verse 24, the Bible says, Then the Lord rained down bread and suffer on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus he threw those cities and the entire plain, including all those living in the cities and also the vegetation in the land. But Lord's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. But Lord's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. In case she had not looked back, she had not changed to change pillar of salt. Maybe, I was saying, the mercy in Barcelona and 30 and Guinea, first game, how much is that? What is it Is it four? Four or three? Zero? I think it was four zero. Then they returned like, they gave them like five zero. Maybe if they had not said they mercy like football goal, maybe the way you can play normally you're gonna play. Even my said there's no way they mercy anything to you in school. Maybe if they had not said it's a football goal, maybe if they not equated it to God, maybe they were gonna win. The question I'm asking, are there things we can say that they're affecting our progress too? Are there things that we need to be conscious of? Are there things that we need to say, oh, this one, maybe I should be careful. And today's by Sunday school, I say, let's check the way we do things. A lot of things we do have consequences. The same way God can get angry, the, the, the lesson that I say, there are two sides of God. The first one is that, the first lesson say, the finger of God describe. We talk about it when God gets angry. The second part that I say, Lesson Allah 2, it's mercy and judgment. The thing of God also is mercy and judgment. I like one Bible verse. 
Look at that. Second Corinthians chapter 25. 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 26 and verse 5. Sometimes this Bible verse, this Bible something. But Chronicles is at the beginning of it's not five. Seven the Chronicles. Beginning. Seven Chronicles 26 and verse 5. Second Chronicles 26, Amen. verse 5. And he saw God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the vision of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Did you see that last sentence? As long as he sought God, God made him to prosper. Yeah. Second Chronicles. 26 and verse 5. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. 26 and verse 5. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. So, if he stopped seeking the Lord, God will make him not to prosper. Do you know back in Africa? I will tell the church. I will say people in America, even when they die, they go to hell. They enjoy. But people in Africa, when you die, you go to hell, it works. Why? Why is it? I used to think I used to think that America, when you live in America, you're yeah. it's complete enjoyment. But even in America. That was perception of America on that right. Mm. <laughs> eh? And nobody they won't go even tell you get it. So but then I used to tell them, even when, yeah, when you in, well, at least Africa they had that yeah. That what no had that when you die in the hat and you go to hell, you die from hell to hell. <laughs> but you at least they go in America. But if you kinda look at it, not everybody in America enjoy it. Yeah. For America, there's some people that America have become a burden. Then, this Bible that is saying, there's no way you can live a fulfilling life without Jesus. There's no way go up, come down. If God is not part of the equation, the life will not make sense. Praise God. Yeah, now God is saying, there was this man, he was a king. He was a, a king that's supposed to be at rest. He saw, everything's supposed to be going well. But the Bible says his success or his prosperity was depending on the way he would give himself to the things of God. And do you know what they have come to realize? If the people just do the church meeting and get come once in a while, I will not be as effective Christian as I'm supposed to be. Hey, you know what yeah. When I came to an American meeting, I used to attend one church, and I was just one of the pastors. So I would just sit down in the church, this one I'll come to church, next one I'll work, this one I'll come to church, next one I'll work. Because I'm not fully involved. But when I got involved, do I miss, do I miss church again? Yeah. So I'm thinking, How do you get to do that? Go on, made a way. Oh. Go on, made a way. Because there's people just there, there's nothing. Not to call you guys work every other weekend. One of the things I've come to. That is not because I don't have to. No. But one thing I do, you see this God work, this work of God. It's called work of God because it's God's work. It's called work of God because it's God's work. And because it's God's work, God has a way of, God is like a coach. God can look at certain people let me pull you here and use you to make impact for me so if God wants to use me to make impact for him the other working place he should go with you with <laughs> hey you understand me yeah. <laughs> so if God wants to use me God told the children of Israel God told Pharaoh let my people go so they can go and serve me if God wants to use you for a work you don't have to go and kill yourself God will make a way 
Praise the name of the Lord. You're not going to me, I say, I won't resign my work. I stay working. The black, I stay on the clock. As I talk to you, I'm on the clock. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm on the clock. When I finish with it, I go back. We go continue our work. Praise the name of the Lord. Am I able to be in church? Me, I'm able to be in church. God, if God says he wants to use you for your work, just make yourself available and see what God will do. Praise the name of the Lord. But here now he's saying, as long as this man seek after God, things are working for him. You know myself now. Maybe they want to do there's some people that work harder than us that know he don't think. There's some people that work is they work they do so difficult, they know he don't think. Up and down money to let no he don't think. But God is saying, if we do this, if we give this thing to God, if we follow God, if we seek God, while we do our normal thing, God will take care of everything. There's this Bible verse we're reading the other day, Matthew 6, 32, that says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. Most of the time, people don't look at the verse that came before that one. Do you know what the verse that came before that one said? Don't look for clothes. Don't look for houses. Don't look for money. Your heavenly father, verse 23 says, Your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. Praise the name of the Lord. Say, Your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. But he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all other things shall be added unto you. Let's end with this Bible verse Exodus chapter 1 and verse 15. Exodus chapter 1 and verse 15. Genesis, Exodus, Exodus is the second book of the Bible. I want to read from verse 15. I would have read from 15 from verse 20, but I'm not going to read that long scripture. It's a long scripture. But I will tell you what it says from verse 15, Exodus 1, 15 to 19 to 21. I'll tell you what it says from 15 to 20, then we'll read 21. The king, because you know the Egyptian were slaves. So the king told the Egypt, told the midwife, the people that used to give birth, when men, when they born, when the woman gave birth, is that men kill it. Is that woman keep it. The women they will be working for all the daddy working for all but that men, that the men will come for all for work. So is that men kill it. So the women look at it for you. Is that what God wants us to do? No, that's not what God wants. No, we're not doing it. But rather obey God. Then look at verse 21. Are you at verse 21? Mm -hmm. And because the midwives fear God, He gave them families of their own. This which Bible NIV? What does your Bible say? How did your Bible put it? 21. And Mary answered them saying, No, Exodus 1 15. Oh, Exodus 1 15. Exodus 1 21. Are you reading 15? Exodus 15? Yeah. Oh, 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 and it came to pass because the midwife fear God that he made them houses. That he made them houses. My own Bible says, and it came to and because the midwife feared God, he gave them families of their own. Ah. What was the direct consequence of fearing God? He gave them family. Or maybe he gave them another Bible says he gave them houses. Uh -huh. But houses, family, two of them come together, you made one. Eh? Praise the name of the Lord. What are we saying? We're saying. Do you notice that most churches you go to, you will see people that went to most African churches. You will see people that went to church in Liberia. They have for you to see people that were born with that go into church. They have. And most of the I say that Liberian people are not giving birth to children yet. But most of the churches have gone to the people that used to go to church in Africa, that the people stayed in the church here. Then the question I can be asking myself is people that were born here, where they praise the name of the Lord. God wants to reach people. 
there are a lot of places where there are a lot of people that invest with the church. They can't pray with the church. They put many things in their hearts. They say, oh, they check the other church, go to the other church, maybe they come with different stories. Maybe they'll come with money business. Maybe they'll come with the other thing. Maybe they'll come with that other thing. By the grace of God, mm-hmm. if we did Christian Church of God, I shall have the case. That's the, the mission. What we want to achieve as a church, the church is all over the world. You know, the really Christian church of God is a different church. And the way of doing things is different. And that way of doing things, the way we talk now, are you able to understand what I said? The Redeemed Christian Church of God is saying, we want to be able to reach people directly for God. We don't want to say, what a big word I can remember. That we just make everybody scared with big word. They are just come and speak religious terms and we go home. Nobody understands anything. We want to be able to reach people for God. So this child, when she grow up, she should be able to understand that this Bible that said this, this is what my mother did. This is the result she got. Praise the name of the Lord. We want to say, God, use us to achieve this thing for you. Praise the name of the Lord. And that thing has a direct consequence. The same way we are saying now that everything that people do has a consequence. We are saying, yeah, maybe you, after some time, you don't even know who the pastor, who not the pastor, because everybody will work for God the same way. Praise the name of the Lord. We're not saying who using money, who not using money because by the grace of God, nobody here looking for another person money. Everybody can work for themselves. Everybody are working to praise the name of the Lord. Hey, you understand? But we want to do God what God will do. Praise the name of the Lord. We want to go around together and serve God faithfully. There are too many people that are hurting. They will not go to church because they think the church will Together now. When you start living there, you need plenty. Together now, we are saying we want to hold our hands, encourage ourselves. Let's do church, church God way. Yeah. And let's see how God will reward us. And let's see how, let's see the consequence. Praise the name of the Lord. We need this, you know, this lesson all over the world is the same lesson they teach. It's not from here. It's the same lesson they teach, but it happened that we had to talk about consequences today. Close your eyes. For few minutes, you just tell God, I hope to make decisions that will affect my life for some people. Close your eyes and just talk to God for a few minutes. I want to make decisions that will affect my life positively. I want to make decisions concerning my life. I want to make decisions that will affect my life positively. I want to make decisions that will affect my life positively. That will affect my life positively. That will affect my life positively. My Father, my God, help me. Help me. Help me. Help me to do that which will please you. Help me, my Father. Help me, my Maker. King of Kings, help me. Jehovah, this he help me. Help me, help me. Everywhere I've been making wrong decisions. Please help me. Help me, O oh God. Help me, O oh God. Help me, O oh God. Help me, my Father. Help me, my King. Help me, my Maker. Help me, the Most High God. Help me, El Shaddai. Help me, Elohim. We ask for help. We ask for help. We ask for help. We ask for help. My Father, my God, we ask for help. We give you praise. We give you glory. For in Jesus' name we pray. For in Jesus' name we pray. We're going to ask God, just give me the grace. The Bible says our God is a God of all grace. The God of all grace, meaning he can give all grace to do anything. Anything that we put our heart on, say, God, I want to do this for you. God will make it possible. We want to tell God, Father, everything you need to do to make my service to you complete, everything you need to do to make me effective for you, help anything, I want to make a decision for you. I want to follow you all the way. But anything I will, any, any way you can help me, help me. Any way you can help me, my Father, my God, help me. Any way you can help me, I want to, this God, this you, bring you over. I want to follow you complete. I want my fellowship to you to be complete. Any way you can help me, Lord, help me. Any way you can help me, my Father, my God, I pray for help. Any way you can help me, help me. I want to follow you faithfully. I want to follow you the right way, God. I want to follow you the right way, God. My Father, my God, make my service to you complete. My Father, my God, make my service to you complete. King of kings, make my service to you complete, God. Make my service to you complete, God. Help me, my Father. 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 We give you praise. We give you glory. For in Jesus' name we pray. 
voice, let's just lift our voices to heaven and say, Father, thank you for this. Thank you for speaking to us through your word this morning. Thank you for the Sunday school. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Maker. Thank you, the Most High God. Thank you, Asians of this. Thank you, Elohim. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want you to look back. I know how many of us have been looking at our whole picture from Liberia to here. Look on that picture, you see somebody there no more. It's not because you're too beautiful or you're too smart, but God kept your life for a reason. Just to just so before we go to our, our praise and worship, we decided to, by God,